Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for you all. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at Lotan from the Idaneth Deepkin faction for Aegis Sigmar. This guy's a little tally keeper or record keeper, I don't know, he's the warden of something. Anywho, he's been given a prime in light gray using Vallejo Surface Primer, uh, light gray, Badger Patriot 105, round 20 PSI, and he has been kept separate from his octopus. We're going to base coat the armor as what we're going to be working on this video. We're going to be base coating it in Screaming Skull. And so very lightly, just with the dampness of the brush, just to thin the color out ever so slightly, we are going to apply this uh, to the armored areas. So basically just his shoulders, his back, chest, and his helmet. Uh, the uh, His uh, trim of his robes also looks like it gets colored in a similar fashion. I think we'll do something a little bit different when we get to that later on. And so really quickly, we're just going to slap that onto the armor. Two coats is all that's necessary. Screaming Skull and Nagroth Knight. Basically, what we're going to do here is we are going to two brush blend the uh, colors onto the armor here. And so basically, I start laying in the Nagroth Knight straight out of the brush and then begin taking some, another brush with a load of uh, Screaming Skull and then begin blending that in and just drawing that out towards the ends of the shoulder pad. And if I didn't quite, quite like how I was uh, blending there, I just simply come in with a little bit more of the purple or a little bit more of the bone. Either way, working really quickly as fast as I can to blend these colors because we're not using any kind of retardants or mediums. We're just simply using the dampness of the brush and just basically speed of application to uh, achieve our desired effects. You can see it looks rather haphazardly initially when I'm laying it down, but then you can see after a while it does kind of blend out to a smooth kind of look to it. <laughs> It does look kind of rough when I initially lay it out, but have faith. Again, you can see on the helmet here, I'm leaving a dark point in the uppermost rim of the helmet while I want the brighter color down at the bottom portion of the helmet. And then, of course, we are going to do a similar motif on the top of the helmet. We're going to lay a lot of the purple on the very top of the helmet and then on the outer edges, uh, hit it with the uh, Screaming Skull and just build the brightness out. And again, you kind of go back, uh, you know, once or twice, but again, you know, as long as you're quick, you can pretty much get this laid out very, very quickly. No worries. And so once that is done and we allow that to dry, we're going to come in with some cardboard crimson. Cardboard crimson on top of this purple. I know what you're thinking. Is he gone mad? No. Basically what I want is uh, varying tones in this uh, armor here because I really what I want is kind of just a more organic and colorful and... I want to bring a bit of warmth into the uh, into this uh, purple hue that we have going on here. And so that's where we're going to add the Carbur Crimson. The Carbur Crimson is going to give it a little bit of warmth as well as keeping it kind of dark, but also keeping within the side of, you know, kind of purples and magentas. And so we're not laying it on too heavily. We're just looking for it to tint. Anywhere you see kind of pooling up, I do pull that out of the recesses as I didn't want it to, you know, obviously to pool up. Next is Slanesh Gray, and this is going to be a quick little dry brush concentrating basically at the brightest points of the armor and then drawing upwards but basically we're just going to go around and just very lightly uh, bring out the texture of the armor you see it's pretty straightforward here again we're just concentrating just mostly our brush strokes at the brightest points of the armor and uh, but we are going all the way up to the dark points uh, of purple and you can see there we could leave it as such um, but i figured you know what let's go one step further and let's make it a little bit more interesting Iridescent medium from Liquitex. We're gonna change this and give this a, a nice iridescent look essentially. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have kind of a uh, seashell kind of look to this. I am laying this in in a fairly thin layer onto the model. And it does look like it's, it kind of dominates the overall effect, but once it dries, it's actually really fantastic. Uh, you can see here, I'm just playing I just a, like a not too heavy uh, a coat onto the model, but I am laying a fairly even layer down on the model surface. If you lay too much down, then it's really good. The effect is really going to dominate the, the uh, model. But again, the way this stuff dries is it looks really, you know, bright at the beginning. But once it dries, it becomes a little bit more subdued. Under the camera lights, you see a lot of the silver. But onto your eye, you see a lot more colors play back at you. Here you can see how under the light, how we can change it. And you can see how it, uh, it's not quite as uh, metallic. Under certain directions, it does look really metallic, but in other directions, it doesn't quite look that. And so that's basically kind of like a seashell kind of look. And so some of you guys out there might want that seashell look for your deepkin. And I think this might be the way you want to go. So there it is. It's as easy as that. 
Well, I hope you found that quick tip useful and informative. You can watch another quick tip today on miniwargaming.com's vault. Just click on the link in the video description below to watch it right now. If you're not already a vault member, you can sign up for a free seven day trial. Be sure to sign up for the silver membership and that will give you instant access to over a thousand painting tutorials already in our vault. And again, thank you for watching, commenting and subscribing and happy wargaming.